The last time I flew, this happened. Um, that's weird. Yeah, that's not gonna work for me. Okay. Uh, this is Cherokee 7738 November. I actually need to go back to Sugarland Airport, please. On today's flight, I will be answering the question, what exactly happened? So jump in my airplane, Little Red, and let's fly to Lufkin, Texas for a $100 cheeseburger. Well, good morning, everybody. We are back in Little Red. We are going to try this $100 hamburger again. Obviously, in the last video, I didn't quite make it to Lufkin like I was hoping. So today, that is exactly where we are going. We have a few clouds here and there, but nothing that we need to be too concerned about. Sugarland Ground, Cherokee 773 in November. I'd like to pick up IFR to Lufkin, please. 773 in November, Sugarland Ground, clear to Lufkin Airport. Has filed, maintain 2,000. Expect 5,000 minutes after departure. 123.8, squat 4634. All right, clear to Lufkin as filed, climb maintain 2000, expect 5000 within one zero minutes, frequency 123.8, squat 4634, 773 in November. 773 in November, right back where I. Roger, 773 in November, thanks. All right, 4634, we're gonna set 2000 because that is gonna be our initial climbing altitude. Takeoff mode is enabled and runway heading 350 is bugged. So I'm gonna go over here and type in Lima, Buckshot, I went past it, <laughs> Kilo, Angelina County, Lufkin, Texas. Then come up here to Sugarland, select departure, and we're gonna do the Lufkin 3, which is right here. We're using runway 35, we'll load that in, and all of our waypoints are in here as well. Perfect. Sugarland Tower, Cherokee 77. Excuse me, Sugarland Ground, Cherokee 7738 November is holding short of Foxtrot, ready to taxi. 7738 November, Sugarland Ground, runway 35, taxi via Foxtrot Alpha. 35 via Foxtrot Alpha, 7738 November, thanks. Good morning, everybody. It is currently 11.15. It is a beautiful day to fly. As you can probably tell, the airplane is all fixed up. And on today's flight, once we get up in the sky and we level off at a safe altitude, I am going to actually explain what happened to the airplane and ultimately what my aircraft mechanic had to do in order to fix the problem. I'm also going to be addressing a couple of the questions and the comments that I got on that video. But I do want to say thank you very much for all of the love and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome to the Caviators. I'm gonna bring my RPMs up to 1,000. Just right there. Parking brake is set. Fuel proper tank, I've got 19 in the left, 20 in my right, and I'm currently on my right tank, which is the fuller one of the two, so that is looking good. Trim for takeoff. I'm gonna bring my trim here to the middle of neutral. Just like that, that looks amazing. I'm also gonna tighten up my seatbelt again. I had to loosen it earlier so I could close my air vents in the back because it was really cold this morning. It was like 41 degrees when I got to the airport. Flight control check. So pushing and pulling that control yoke forward and back and then rolling it here side to side. Definitely freedom of movement. Now look outside of the airplane and make sure everything is moving in the correct direction. This is a left turn, so left aileron is up, right aileron is down. And for a right turn, right aileron is now up and the left aileron is down. Instruments are all looking good. So blue over brown, wings are level, ball is nice and centered here. Airspeed indicates zero, which is perfect because we're not moving. We are within 75 feet of field elevation and not indicating a climber descent. That HSI does in fact align with my magnetic compass within 10 degrees. Looks like it's off by about two and there are no bubbles, cracks or leaks. So that is perfect. And Sugar Light Tower, Tricky 7738, November, holding short 35. I am now ready for departure. Thank you. 7738, November, fly runway heading, maintain 2000, runway 35, clear for takeoff. Fly runway heading, climb maintain 2000, 35, clear for takeoff, 7738, November. Listen, 41 Yankee, runway 35, cleared option. Clear for the option, runway 35, four. Finals clear, runway's clear. All right, let's do this thing. Air center line, full power, airspeed's alive, and we'll start that rotate now. Wow, she really wants to fly. She came off the ground quick. <laughs>
I'll be just in the green. Fuel flow looks good. Heading 350. And I'm gonna climb a little faster to try to get away from all these bumps. Thousand feet to go. Got your fuel pump off, fuel pressure's in the green, landing light off. All gauge is still in the green. Perfect. 57738, November, contact Houston departure. Over to departure, 773, November, talk to you soon. Good morning, Houston, Cherokee 773, November, checking in, heading 350, 2000. November 7738, November, Houston, departure, radar contact, climb and maintain 3000. Climb maintain 3000, 7738, November. We'll climb at 115, it's pretty bumpy, so we'll see what that looks like. RPMs are looking good. Still heading 350. All other gauges are looking good too. Hoping 4000 gets me out of these bumps, or this is going to be a rough ride for us today. <laughs> we'll find out together, I guess. 200 feet to go. That loud beeping sound is what that is indicating that we have 200 feet to go until we reach our selected altitude. In this case, 3,000 feet. 7738 November, climb and maintain 5,000. Climb maintain 5,000, 7738 November, thanks. Sweet! I love when that happens. All right. Let's hope that there are no bumps at 5,000 feet now. And once we get up to 5,000, I will lean out my mixture and double check that fuel flow, but it's already looking really good. CHT is currently 368 and all other gauges are in the green. So feeling confident about today's flight, love it. We're climbing at about 500 feet per minute right now. Uh, and airspeed uh, indicated is 122. Ground speed is 112. So we have about a 10 knot headwind up here. CHT is 376 and RPMs are at about 2600 right now. What a beautiful day. Oh my goodness. Good morning, Houston. Cherokee 773 in November checking in 5000 heading 350. November 7738 November, Houston approach on the altimeter 3026. 3026 773 November, thank you. Cool. That changed us by about 20 feet, so we'll climb up 20 more feet and then we will be good to go. We currently have 96 nautical miles to our destination. We are not even remotely close to direct yet, but we have about 55 minutes. So all in all, once we get that turn, we're probably looking at a total of an hour flight. Oh, our time is increasing. We're now at still 95 nautical miles, but 57 minutes because we are flying away from the airport. I can't get over how great my CHT looks. It's at 387. I think it's so funny. On every single video I post, somebody leaves a comment and says, it sounds like I'm saying Turkey instead of Cherokee. I don't know why it sounds that way, but I promise you I am in fact saying Cherokee, not Turkey. It's okay. 38 November, turn right heading 010. Right heading 010, 7738 November. Okay, that helps us a little bit. That's kind of nice. As you can see, we're turning a little bit. That gave us uh, about 20 degrees. Yeah, we're in the final shelf. So right now the Class Bravo starts at 4,000 and goes up to 10,000. Before when we were flying, we were in the lower shelf, which was 2,000 to 10,000. So now we're pretty much out of the way of any airplanes that are coming in to land at those bigger airports that you're probably used to flying, like commercial airliners. And we went down by a couple of minutes. We're now 94 nautical miles and 54 minutes to our destination. So that's good. So my ground speed is 120 and my indicated is 135. So that means we have about 15 miles per hour that are affecting us as far as our speed is concerned based off of those winds, which I did account for when I actually went through and filed my flight plan. I looked at all of the different altitudes and 5,000 was the best because I did not want to fly this far at 3,000. Altitude is your friend. So that kind of leads me into what I wanted to talk to you about on today's flight. For those of you that haven't seen the video yet, once you're done with this one, I will link that video and you can go and watch it. But I had just gotten some serious work done on the airplane. I got a new magneto installed, thanks to Lycoming. And because of that, we had to do some reconfigurations on my GI-275 gauge, which is this one right here. This gives me all of my instrument, um, excuse me, all of my engine instrument information. I was about to enter a cloud and I noticed that my fuel flow was fluctuating between about 30 to 40 gallons per hour. Really quick, I took this footage the next day and if you look at my fuel flow indicator, you can see exactly what I was talking about. That's 
close to impossible in the airplane unless I have a fuel leak. And what I didn't mention in the video is I did cross check my actual fuel gauge indicators to see if one of them was dropping very, very quickly. It wasn't, which meant that realistically it was an instrument depiction issue, which is exactly what it ended up being. And so I had minutes to make a decision before entering that first cloud. And the most important thing is even when you discover something to continue to fly the airplane. So I continued to fly the airplane, double checked it, and once I realized that I really did see what I was seeing and I did have an issue, that is when I contacted air traffic control and told them I needed to return to Sugarland. Why didn't you stay high? Well, I didn't want to continue to deal with this issue while flying in and out of clouds. It ends up being a bigger issue than I expected. I lose my engine and now I'm trying to find a place to land without being able to actually see the ground. That's what I really wanted to avoid, which is why I accepted the descent. That leads me into what the heck happened? <laughs> I am not an AMP, I am not an aircraft mechanic, but the gist of it is is that when we reconfigured the GI-275 gauge for the new Magneto, the K factor needed to be recalibrated. So it needed to be at 68,000 and it was set to 29,000, which is why my readings were so high. I was still only burning between eight to 10 gallons that entire time. It just was indicating something much different. So it was a quick, easy fix, only took about 10 minutes and if you can better explain that feel free to do so in the comment section I like I said I'm not a maintenance person I'm not an AMP I'm not an aircraft mechanic but that is the gist of what I can tell was the issue and everything else is looking good I did a couple of test flights this morning and the airplane is running beautifully so I am very happy and I feel like I've been talking for 20 minutes and we're still at 54 minutes to our destination <laughs> November 38, November, fly heading 060. 060, 7738, November. All right. Now we're starting to go where we need to. Sweet. Love to see it. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. Now we're at 49 minutes, 89 nautical miles. Our, uh, our speed actually went up a little bit. We're ground speed at 109 knots, 126 miles per hour. Indicated is 128, so that means there's only two miles per hour uh, wind that's affecting us right now, which is fantastic. All of our gauges are in the green. Fuel's looking good. CHT's 384. November 38, November, proceed direct to Sushi. And for 7738 November, you said direct sushi. November 38 November, I'm showing you, you have sushi on your flight plan, is that correct? Affirmative for 7738 November. For 38 November, proceed direct sushi, thanks. Direct sushi, no problem, 7738 November, thanks. Okay. Of course, right when I go to drink my water. <laughs> all right, now we're going to nav mode. It's gonna turn us just as hair. I mean, not much at all. So that is good. And over here to the iPad, select that waypoint, direct to. Oh yeah, baby. Now we're showing 39 minutes to destination. Love it. Looks like we have 74 nautical miles to actually get to our destination. On the ground, I went ahead and put in my weather frequency, which for us today was, let me go to the airport, 120625, which I do have set up in here. I don't think we'll pick it up, but let's try. Houston approach, good morning. I have pretty fantastic hearing, but I can't hear that just yet. So we'll wait till we get a little bit closer to pick that up. But we currently have 15 gallons in each tank, so it gives us a total of three gallons, roughly three hours of flight time. And that's about two hours, 15 minutes usable. Because I am on an instrument flight plan, I need to have 45 minutes of reserve fuel, which is totally cool because we have 33 minutes to our destination, and then we'll have about a 40 minute flight back. And I can always get fuel at the next airport if I deem it necessary. So all of our engine instruments are in the green. Our RPMs are at about 2640, 2650. CHT is killing it. It's at 385. And we're burning about 11 to 12 gallons per hour. It's because I have my RPMs a little higher than normal, but I'm 
hungry. It's a beautiful day. Airplane is running beautifully, so we might as well go a little bit faster. <laughs> Our indicated airspeed is now 136, and ground speed is 132. So those winds aren't affecting us near as much as I was worried that they would be. So I'm pretty stoked about that. We're still level at 5,000 feet. Really no traffic to be concerned about because now we are leaving the busy airspace area, which is kind of cool and 32 minutes to our destination, so we're kind of killing it today. Number 3, November, proceed direct destination. Direct destination, 773, November, thank you. There is our airport, direct, direct, nav mode is active, a little bit of a turn to the left, love it. I have to turn the heater back on, that's all right. Okay, with that small little detour turn, that puts us at 34 minutes to our destination. So that is beautiful. Direct. Oh, my apologies. That puts us at 31 minutes to our destination. And quite a few airplanes over here, surprisingly. I didn't expect that, but that's okay. I am gonna turn my heater back on because it got a little chilly in here. And with that turn, we went right back into our headwind. <laughs> Our ground speed is now 124 and our indicated is 137, but it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. The good news is, is that I already know for sure on my flight home it's going to be faster because we'll have a bit more of a tailwind, so that'll be good, I think. I hope. There are 7738 November, Kataki, 7134.8. 134.8, take care, 3 November. Good afternoon, Houston, Cherokee 7738 November, checking in 5000. November 773 in November, Houston Center, left on 7024. 3024, 773 in November. 535, I got the fuel inside. 535, Roger, Squawk BFR, change advisor, frequency approved, you have a good day. Squawk BFR, frequency change approved, you have a good day too, 535. What a cute voice, oh my goodness. It almost sounded like it could be a kid. I've been watching more and more videos, because I watch videos that y'all tag me in all the time, of parents flying with their kids and the kids doing the radio calls. It just warms my heart. I just love it. That was one of the biggest things when I was going through my pilot training that made me nervous was talking on the radios. But once I realized everybody makes mistakes, including air traffic control, I got over it pretty quickly. Now, if you are struggling with radio calls or that makes you nervous for the idea of becoming a pilot, I highly recommend that you start watching YouTube videos like mine. And whenever a radio call comes in for air traffic control, pause the video and see if you can figure out what should be said as the response. Then hit play, see what I say, and see if you were right or not. Um, or if I was wrong, you can point that out too. I'm cool with it. Sometimes we all make mistakes. But I always found that that was really helpful when I was going through my pilot training, especially when I started focusing on instrument. Holy moly, the amount of radio calls and things you have to say is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so now we are 50 nautical miles, so we're about 25 miles closer than we were. So we're going to see if we can pick up that weather again. So COM2. 3277.com2286. Okay, so it is coming in. I think when we get about 10 miles closer, it'll be crystal clear or at least a little bit clearer than it is now. So it'll be a lot easier for us to hear and understand. So then we will pick up the weather. We'll let ATC know because like I said, this is an uncontrolled airport. So we can actually cancel as soon as we feel comfortable. Really, I like to be on the instrument flight plan getting out of the class Bravo airport. Like space, you know, airspace. That's what I meant to say, airspace. <laughs> Chance of a shortcut for one mic dump. I'll take that as a no. They don't want to give him a shortcut. I uh, have your request. Can I get you up a little bit higher here? I'll get you turned to the east if I can. Roger that. One mic dump. I've done that too. All right, so now we are down to 25 minutes, 47 nautical miles, so that is looking great. We're still level at 5,000 feet. Our indicated airspeed is slowly dropping. We're at 133, and ground speed is 125. BHT has been pretty stagnant at about 385, still burning about 11 gallons per hour, and all of the gauges are in the green, so things are looking great. I knew it was going to be a beautiful day to fly. Just like I told you in my last video, when I woke up today, I knew it was gonna be a good day. I don't know why, but I just had a feeling, and so far I have been right. Now, if something rains on my parade, 
I will be pretty devastated. But, you know, we work through our problems. I have to tell you, I've been loving doing all these local flights and discovering local small airports and especially restaurants. Love me a cheeseburger. But I am really looking forward to doing some longer cross country. So I would like to know, would you like to see me fly to California? Would you like to see me fly to Florida? Would you like to see me fly somewhere else? Definitely leave a comment and let me know. I'm really looking forward to getting out on the open road or in this case, the open sky and seeing what the world has to offer. I mean, after all, that's the whole reason I became a pilot was to travel. And I do want to go visit some family. So I have the option to go to California, Arizona, Seattle. If you didn't know, I'm actually originally from Seattle. So definitely let me know what you're thinking because I need some ideas. A bunch of you a while ago gave me some recommendations on some in-flight music that I should be doing. So I am going to be creating a playlist on my phone for me, but if you would like me to create a playlist and give you a link to the music that I listen to while I fly, especially with all of the great recommendations that you have all made, then definitely let me know about that because I would totally be down to help you out and give you some new song choices. I haven't even gotten to listen to like half of them yet because you had so many incredible recommendations but I am going to get to it at some point. So keep me posted. Let me know what you think. Guard change point 351-34.8. Over 64, Hotel Bravo 34.8. I think one of the coolest things about being a general aviation pilot is even though I'm not flying super far away, I am literally flying through the air. I'm by myself. I'm in this small little airplane. I'm watching cars. Well, I was watching cars. Now I'm just over trees and water. But I was watching cars, you know, get stuck at stoplights and stop signs and cut people off. And here I am flying to lunch. I just think that is such an incredible experience. And if you haven't gotten to try it at least once, I do highly recommend it because it might change your whole perspective. You never know. I had quite a few friends when I was going through flight school that were terrified of heights, but getting in an airplane, especially one that they're in control of, that fear goes away. So if that is preventing you from becoming a pilot, at least try an introductory or a discovery flight, because you never know, you might change your tune. I wanted to ask for your help. So if you have noticed, I'm back to actually using my A20s because my A30 microphone won't sit where it's supposed to, like it just kind of keeps falling. So if you have any advice on how I can fix that, please do let me know. I am going to reach out to Bose and see if they can send me a replacement piece or if they have any recommendations. But I figured I would ask you because y'all know everything. I mean, you help me out so much. So if you have any ideas on what I could do to fix that, please do let me know. Leave a comment because it's really quite annoying and I love that headset. All right, so we are a little bit less than 40 nautical miles now, so let's take a listen and see if we can't pick up that weather. I do have Comp 2 on. I have had on the whole time, but if I hold down this test button, it comes through a lot easier. Let's see. 8 November, what approach are you planning on at Luskin today? Uh, just the visual for 773 in November. Roger, let me know when you have the weather and notice. I'll let you know as soon as I can pick up the weather and notice. Thank you. 3 November. It's like reading my mind. I was just about to listen to it. You gotta love it. All right, now I'm gonna hold down that test button and we'll see if it comes through. Okay, so winds are coming from 2-9-0. It looks like somebody actually just came in and landed at that airport and they used runway 34, so I will plan on using 34. Let's see. If I do 34 and the winds are coming from 2-9-0, then I'm gonna have a left, a little bit of a left crosswind. It's actually not too bad at all, so that works for me. So worst case, we can always overfly the field and see what the winds are doing, but I feel confident that because that is now the second airplane that has come in and landed on 3-4, that is the runway that I want to be using. So that works for us. We have 19 minutes until we get there, so I'm going to go ahead and let this lovely ATC controller know that we have picked up our weather, we've got our notums, and we are ready to go and get that $100 cheeseburger. Approach Cherokee 773 in November, I've got the weather and notums at Lufkin. 
number three at November Roger, and I just want to verify with a note on that um, the one six fasties are out of service, and there is a power obstruction uh, four point one miles east and seven point three miles. Roger, no problem. I'm actually planning on landing runway three four for seven seven three in November. I love when they do that. She's just double checking, making sure I know what's going on. I like it. I do see one airplane actually just departed the area, so that's good. And they also took off from 3-4, so I think we've made the right call. Beautiful. 33 nautical miles, 18 minutes till we get to our destination. This flight has been easy peasy lemon squeezy, okay? I love it. Indicated airspeed is 135, ground speed is 128. We're still level at 5,000 feet. Our CHT is 384, RPMs are at about 2610, 2620, still burning about 11 gallons per hour, and we have 12 gallons in our left tank and 15 in our right. So once I get down to 10 in the left, I will switch to the right tank to land on the fuller tank. What is your go-to like topping you have to have on a cheeseburger, other than cheese? If you don't like cheese, that's cool. You can let me know that too. But leave me a comment because mine is honestly bacon, pickles, and lettuce. I'm not a fan of tomato. I love all things tomato, you know, marinara sauce, spaghetti sauce, ketchup, all that jazz, but I don't like actual tomato. It has a funny texture. It's not my cup of tea. And I don't like onions, but if you like onions, that's cool. Just let me know, because I might need to try out some new burger combinations. All right, let's see here. So our traffic pattern altitude is 1,296 feet. So we're gonna round up to 1,300, which is totally cool. And obviously our winds were fine. We're VFR, no clouds. Track 519, uh, Roger, report your um, missed approach. You can change the visor frequency at this time. When I get back on the ground, I am going to try to see if I can get my headset to connect to my Bluetooth so we can have a little jam sesh on the way home. That'd be nice. Center of Sky West, 4742 at 12,800, climb at 1,6,000. Six two eight two. Let's do now level sixteen, picking up four line miles. I left com two on, so it was slowly starting to come through. I turned it off, so that's cool. Uh, let's see. Our unicom frequency is going to be one two three point zero. So I am going to put this in because I don't think I'm going to be switching tanks again. We'll see. I mean, worst case, if I do switch frequencies, like we can just reset it. It's not that big of a deal, but. Being this close to the airport, I don't think it's going to happen, which is kind of nice. Center, commuter 4278, any chance for higher? Commuter 4278, 132.77. 13277, commuter 4278, thanks. She didn't want to give him higher, but she gave him a new frequency so he could request it with somebody else. That's funny. <laughs> 13 minutes to destination, and we need to lose, what did I say, it was 1,300? So we need to lose 3,700 feet. So 3,700 feet um, by the time we actually get over to the airport. So she'll probably start our initial descent here quickly, or shortly, pretty soon. Got a couple of airplanes. I can't quite tell if they're coming in to land. This guy is 3,000 feet below us, which puts him at 2,000 feet, which means he only needs 700 feet to lose before he gets to traffic pattern altitude. So realistically, he is going into the airport and he is also lining up for 3-4. So that just once again instills that we picked the right runway. Perfect. Number 604, Hotel Bravo, descend and maintain 5,000. I see you climbing. Are you having an issue? November 6th, Air 4, Hotel Bravo, Houston Center, are you with me? I think she was trying to get a hold of somebody that was climbing when they weren't supposed to. But I couldn't remember what the tail number is, so hopefully they've already responded. I'm listening. Center United 1168, just be advised, from 16 to 19 we got moderate. United 1168, roger. Thank you, contact Houston Center 132.77. He'll keep you climbing. Good day. Just heard a pirate. That's called a pilot report. So for us pilots, we can actually report to ATC what the weather conditions are doing. So, you know, light chop, just pretty much anything that we think other pilots should know about, we can tell ATC and they will then pass it along, especially if a pilot asks, which is pretty cool. Light chop, we actually experienced exactly that when we took off from Sugarland and we were really bumpy. That's what light chop is. 
So it sounds like it's also happening up high because they are climbing between 16,000 and 19,000 and they are also experiencing that. So bummer for them. <laughs> All right. So we have two airplanes, three airplanes, four airplanes currently flying over Angelina County Airport. So hopefully she will switch me over. In fact, I might go ahead and cancel so I can start talking to them. 38 November, descend and maintain 3000. Descend and maintain 3000, 773 November. All right. 3000, vertical speed, we'll do 500 feet per minute. Enriching that mixture a bit, pull some of that power back. Beautiful. And it's also time to switch tanks. Electric fuel pump on, fuel pressure is in the green. Over to that right tank here, fuel pressure remains in the green. Electric fuel pump off, and fuel pressure stays in the green. Looks like all of them were coming in to land, so they should be clear. One, two, three, four, five different airplanes just came in and landed on three, four. Nice. The restaurant's probably going to be a little busy. <laughs> okay. So this runway is 4,311 feet long by 100 feet wide. And it says good asphalt, so that is good. No specification on left or right traffic, so obviously our normal traffic would be left traffic, so we'll probably enter a left base for 3-4, just because of the direction that we're coming in. And then if we need to do something different, we can. I love when I go into a 500 foot descent because we are currently going 147 miles per hour indicated, 138 ground speed, which doesn't sound super impressive, but we are also, you know, flying towards the ground currently. <laughs> All of our gauges are in the green though and everything else is looking spectacular. Love to see it. Alright, I'm looking for the field. I think I have a general notion of where it's supposed to be. I don't quite see it yet, but we are currently 13 and a half miles away, so not too shabby. That loud beeping sound Indicates we are a thousand. November, uh, Lufkin Airport is at your 12 o'clock in uh, one zero miles report airport in sight. Roger, I think I have it. I just need another few seconds to verify for 773 November. Anyways, that loud beeping sound indicates that we are a thousand feet away from our selected altitude. We are in a descent, which is perfect. So we are going to level off at 3000. And just looking for the actual runway. I do believe I have. That lake is dried up, so I can't use that as a reference point. Where's that road? There's that road. Looks like it is right in the trees. And approach Turkey 773 in November. I've got the field in sight. November 3, November, Roger, cleared visual approach on Lufkin Airport for cancellation time. This frequency RF unable through uh, flight service. Change to advisory frequency is approved. Change to advisory is approved. I'll go ahead and cancel with you now for 773 November, please. 38, November, Roger, radar service terminates. Squawk VFR, change to advisory frequency is approved. Good day. Squawk VFR, changing to advisory. Take care, 773 November. Cool. So, I'm going to come over this way and just keep an eye out for some of this traffic, find out what they're all doing. At a 45, 4, 3, 6, negative, full stop. Okay. Four, five, five, three, six, remaining in five, negative. Looking out for this airplane here, he's 600 feet below me, and we're gonna descend down to 1300. About nine miles to go. We'll go full rich on that mixture. Angelina County, Cherokee 7738 November, about an eight nautical mile left base for runway 34. This will be a full stop, Angelina County. Let's see what this guy decides to do. And one zero Sierra X rays descending from 44 to 13, about uh, 10 miles to the north, re entering the left downwind uh, for 34. Okay. Okay. 
This guy's at my same altitude. But we'll keep descending down. Cleveland traffic, Jersey 7993 with turning left across 1st Cleveland. There we go. He's now 300 feet. 400 feet. Turning downwind and runway 36. And there's 500. Add in that power. 500 feet still to go. Perfect. Cleveland traffic, Baron 75 Tango, the party area to the north. Fuel pump landing light on, rotating heat can on, keto heat and car heat are off. Fuel tanks are good, all of our gauges are in the green, RPMs are looking great. Beautiful. Nakadosh's traffic, then heading 340. To the south, going to enter a left downwind departure. Nakadosh's traffic. Angelina County, Cherokee 773 in November is on a four mile left base, about to turn final runway 34, full stop, Angelina County. All right, field is definitely in sight. Start pulling some of that power back. Final is clear. Not seeing anybody on the runway, listening to those radios. And it sounds like they are all entering a traffic pattern, but they are not here yet, so that's perfect. As always, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and I will see you when we get on the ground. Angelina County Traffic, Cherokee 773 in November is turning final three miles straight in, three, four, full stop, Angelina County. Keeping my airspeed up a little bit to help out everybody entering the area so they don't have to wait on little old us. Everything is looking good. Kind of expected it to be pretty darn up bumpy over here because of all of these trees, so no harm, no foul. One Fox Charlie turning base of runway 36. That's an entirely different airport, so no stress there. Add in some more power here just to fight that sink a little bit over these trees. Perfect. A little bit more back trim, slowing myself down so I can put in my flaps. Keep it coming, baby. You got it. Angelina County, Cherokee 773 in November, two nautical miles straight in final three, four, full stop, Angelina County. is that wide arc, first notch flaps 10 degrees, and we'll do flaps to five. And just bring her down nice and easy. Turning base on runway 36, final on runway 36. Angelina County, Grumman 10, Sierra X-ray in the descent 45, or 45 for the left downwind, one, uh, three, four, full stop, Angelina. Okay. Aerodynamic braking. I don't know where the restaurant is, but I will find it. And I will turn here on Delta. Well, as always, if you enjoyed today's video, hit subscribe, smash that like button. It helps the channel. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you soon.